Howdy, folks. Uh, we, okay, so here's where we're at. We have come up with two separate relationships that have allowed us to define Newton's second law. All right, Newton's second law says two things that, um, well, that an object's acceleration is proportional to the net force applied. And that says that a graph of acceleration versus net force is linear. All right, now, this assumes, of course, um, for a constant system mass. We also found that a system's acceleration it, 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 that a system's acceleration is inversely related to the system's mass. And we went through a manipulation of some data, oof, some of us did, that proved that because we suggested with this graph of A versus M that looked something like that. Well, that suggests an inverse relationship. So what we did to prove or disprove that was to plot that relationship. Let's plot A versus the inverse of M. And if they are indeed proportional, then this graph comes out linear. Well, it does. Okay, and this, now, this does assume for a constant net force. So here you apply a bunch of different net forces to a certain identical, to a, to a constant system, to the same object, and the more force you apply, the faster it accelerates. All right, over here, this says, you apply the same net force to a bunch of masses, well, the bigger the mass gets, the bigger the mass gets. Um, so a big mass has a small 1 over m, and that has a small acceleration. Big mass, small acceleration. Small mass has a big 1 over m, and that gives you a big acceleration. All right, and we put those together into one expression for Newton's second law, which says this, A is net force over mass. And the way that we usually see that, and the way that you will use it the most, is to say net F equals MA. Net force equals mass times acceleration. Okay, now, here's your job. Your job is, we see straight line graphs. All right. Um, and with straight line graphs, we have to say to ourselves as science types, well, what, what, what's, a, what's a, first of all, what's a graph good for? It's good for identifying, okay, direct relationship. Yep, there's a direct relationship between, between uh, acceleration and net force. Yep, there's a direct relationship between acceleration and the inverse of mass. Okay, great. De identifying and developing general trends, wonderful. All right, but as you might remember, we also use graphs in a lot of cases to find other quantities of interest. Other quantities of interest. All right, and in this case, well, you have an equation for Newton's second law. There it is. And it has two of the three quantities um, in your graph. It has it has the two quantities on your graph. Regardless of what you graphed, it has those two quantities in it and a third one. So guess what? That means you can find the third one with your graph. Now, notice, I'm not saying with your data table only. I'm saying with your graph. Use your graph. And what that doesn't mean is make whatever number of data points you collected make a calculation for every one of those data points. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying what we can do, at one point this year, I think I might have said, you know what would be great is if, or I say this once in a while, I say, you know what would be great if we could make a graph of, you know, generically A versus B, 
and then I'll put the data points down in ink that disappears after a while. Because what do we do? Well, we use the points to identify this general trend. And what would be awesome whoops, is if, whoops, would be if these data points just disappeared. And we didn't even know they were there anymore. Because now we have the general trend. And what can we do with, say, a linear general trend? Well, there's things you can calculate about lines and the, and the trends that they follow. You know, like this one doesn't look, whoops, it doesn't look like this. It looks like this. But a different one might look like that. And those are all different trends. They're all linear, but they're all slightly different. And so you should be able to ideally calculate something using your graph that's not one of the things on your axes because you have an equation that relates the two things on your axes. So you have to calculate something that might be interesting. I'm, I'm trying to be as thick as I can here, like, like uh, what's the word, like um, pat patronizing as I can, where I hope you know what I'm saying, but I'm, you know I'm not just going to tell you, but since you have an equation, that relates two of the things on your, or the two things on your axes, there's something else you can find. All right, now, for this one, if you did this graph, like most of you did, there's a little, it's a little bit odd. You have to go through a weird extra step to find the interesting thing. All right, if you do this one, well, your life's a little bit easier. If you do the thing you would do with a straight line, you know, that result will yield something right off the bat. But you did have to make two graphs, so your life was tough, too. All right, if you're doing this one over here, uh, well, when you do what you do with this graph, with this graph there's going to be one more step you have to follow. All right, but you got to ask yourself, what have we done in the past with straight line graphs? How have we used them to calculate something else that's not on the axis? Can you do that here? And what justification do you have that the result of your little process actually gives you something interesting? Well, here's the hint. Here's the justification. You have an equation that you can use and arrange in any old way you want, algebraically. Okay? So for tomorrow, the next time I see you, come back with work done right on your graph that uses the graph and doesn't just use your individual data points. Use your graph and show me how you calculate the value of something interesting. Got it? Okay. Let's see. Bye.